Wouldn't that be nice? I am in the valley of the shadow of death with stage four ovarian cancer. I, I don't like to give voice to the recurring part. Two and a half years since the diagnosis, 49 chemo infusions. Yes, you gotta love MSK for trying to make the experience less onerous. But to me, an infusion should come with mint, rum, and a pretty little umbrella. <laughs> yeah, we go to the chemo suite, not for a tryst, but just to put poison in our veins, hoping madly the chemo will devour those crazed cells and leave the rest of our body alone. We get warm blankets and even a free lunch. And yet, <laughs> I am so sick and tired of chemo. And I complain. But there's this gracious woman in my mindful meditation class who's been dancing with lung and breast and lung cancer again for 14 years. Still, she manages generously and empathetically to listen to the rest of us. She's always so well put together, matching bags and shoes and autumnal colors. She's our long distance runner. And I complain. You know, how about those irksome side effects? If chemo is over, will they go away? How do I get rid of the toxicity if I'm ever in remission? Do I sweat it out? Do I have lots of sex? <laughs> no, maybe I'll just go to a Mexican beach and drink margaritas with the aforementioned little, pretty little umbrellas. One of the definitions of evil in the dictionary is very unpleasant. A lot of this treatment has been very unpleasant. In one week, I had, oh, and now join me to the tune of the 12 Days of Christmas. Three cat scans. Two MRIs. One spinal tap. I'll take a partridge in a pear tree any day of the week. These tests prove I'm fine. I just have ovarian cancer. We all knew that. I am afraid. I am afraid of dying. I am afraid it will hurt. Yet I have empirical proof that morphine works. I don't remember the hysterectomy hurting at all. So, I'm afraid of letting go. <laughs> I don't want to leave my glorious offspring, their spouses and those yet unborn grandchildren. And what about my gal pals and my warrior niece? And I still haven't done my soul's work. I'm not even sure what that is. I want to let go of my fear of flying, of dying, like, like the Navajo. I want to ride bareback and bare-breasted on a horse, my face painted hell, my whole body painted for battle, and my arms outstretched hollering, this is a good day to die. To be ready, I have to make amends with my fellows and peace with my choices. But even if I do, what about those glorious sons and those unembodied grandchildren? How do I leave them without longing for more? I now read the obits. 67 is not an unusual age to die. Yet may I please have 18 more years? Just not on chemo. Oh, I know I won't make it to my granddaughter's wedding, assuming she isn't a child bride. But we will have lots of time for dancing and discovery. Palenque, the Sphinx. Why, why did I choose 85? It's enough time to do my final smashing project. And in my family, the body starts to snap, crackle, and pop at 86. My mom, 86, started asking me, Which one was your father? <laughs> she was married three times. Harry. Oh, he was my favorite. <laughs> Isn't your husband dead? Yes, Mom. He died years ago. In fact, my husband died 18 years ago. It's really a very long, long time. 18 years ago, a small group of us slid and stumbled up a mountain in the snow. James, my younger son at 15, carried his father's ashes in a Hershey's Kisses tin box under his parka so the snow in the box wouldn't get wet. 
We sang the 23rd Psalm walking up the hill. When we got bored, we played with the words and jointly produced a very humorous, now forgotten version, giggling as we helped each other over the icy patches. We buried the box on the top of a mountain overlooking a splendid valley in western Massachusetts. A fitting end for a theatrical man. So, 18 years from now, will I be ready to ride my stunning Palomino like a Navajo? Or will I still be pleading for more time with my offspring? In the meantime, if I can completely let go of the attachment to life, if I can be truly okay with whether I live or die and not be afraid, I will probably have a better chance of living. Right? <laughs>